Good day, poker peeps. This is Sky with Smart Poker Study. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate a very useful Poker Tracker 4 study strategy, namely reviewing a full session or a full tournament at a time. Now, to help you learn most efficiently with Poker Tracker 4, get my free PDF link in the description down below. The PDF is called The Five Poker Tracker 4 Study Strategies Every Player Needs to Use. That's going to help you out for sure. So, it is a good idea to review one full table or one full tournament occasionally in your study sessions. Now, I use this study strategy quite often when I experience tilt. When I have a tilty hand, sure, that one hand of tilt or anger where I lost half a stack, my full stack, 2x stack, whatever it might be, that one hand in particular is important to review to try to dissect what happened, how tilt cost me so many chips. But what's also helpful is to review the hands leading up to that tilt, whether it's the entire session or maybe the prior 10, 15 hands, because things might have happened in the hands leading up to that big loss that caused your anger to grow, put you on tilt, and led to that big loss. Another thing I like to do, sometimes I'll spot a hand like this where I won 157 big lines with pocket queens, and I want to look at it and see why did I win so much? What happened? in that session to lead me to winning so much in that hand. It could have been something just as simple as I flop a set versus set and I win their entire stack, or there could be reasons leading up to that hand that led me to play the way I did and earned a ton of chips. Or maybe you played an entire tournament and you wanna see how your play progresses as blinds and antis go up and your stack size starts to decrease. You wanna work on your tournament skills. So first for cash game players, I'll show you how to do this, and then I'll show you for tournament players as well. But we're on the statistics tab right here, the summary report. Currently, it's grouped by position. Now, if like I did here, I highlighted cutoff to see that pocket queen's hand. Well, all of these hands right here are just all hands dealt in the cutoff, but it's not just the one table. It's every single table that I played on June 12th right here. So you'll want to switch this to review the entire table session. Instead of group by position, go to group by table session. Now we can see on June 12th, I played these different table sessions. And this is actually the session right here where I was up 1658 by the end of the session and all of the hands. What you're gonna do once you find the, t uh, the table session that you want to review, sort the date column from early to late. So click the header up here. You can see now it's actually from late to early. Click it one more time. And now the earliest hand, 717 that I was dealt on this table, 718, 719, all the hands are right there in order for me. Next, what you're going to do is right click and select replay all hands in report. Right click, replay all hands in report. Boom, the first hand I played was nine deuce offsuit in the big blind, and there it is right there. So we're gonna go through these hands leading up to the pocket queens in just a little bit. Before we get to that, let's go to the tournament tab for all you tournament players. So tournaments, we're still on statistics. Uh, oh, let's go like, uh, I guess, uh, hmm, this year. Oh, no tournaments for hero this year. There we go, under Fisky Misky, my other code name or screen name. So currently, group it by tournament. If you have it grouped by description, buy-in, or position, change it to group by tournament. And bam, each of the tournaments right here, let's highlight this one, play 28 hands total. The latest hand right up here at 2.25 p.m., just click the column once again, the header of the column, and then bam, the earliest hand was at 2 o'clock, jack 6 offsuit. Now right-click, replay all hands in a report, and you can review that tournament from start to finish. All right, so let's review those hands from that cash game session from the first one leading up to that pocket queen's hand. Now, there are four questions that I often like to ask, depending on the situation, depending on what's going on in the tournament. Question number one is, what's my table image? We're at the very first hand. It's ignition poker. I'm just listed as uh, player two, player three, whatever it is on the screen. I have no image right now. They know nothing about me, right? But as the uh, the table session as the session develops and I play hands or don't play hands, whatever it is, I'm going to start developing an image and we're going to see my HUD stats pop up and start to accumulate over time. So that uh, will help uh, clue me in to my image. Now, who is the number one target? We'll see after a few hands right here who our number one target is. Often, especially for the number one target at the table, but for everyone at the table, you want to be asking yourself always, how can I exploit this player? 
with whatever position, whatever type of player they are, whatever their ranges are, whatever their bet sizes, you always want to think about how can I exploit them. And those HUD stats are a great way, but also just watching specific plays that they make help you exploit them as well. Now, lastly, how could I have seen tilt coming or avoided it altogether? That's if you're reviewing kind of a tilty session where anger caused you some loss. Now, I've already gone through the hands and reviewed them, took notes on each one, but we're going to hit them each right now, starting from the nine deuce offsuit all the way down to that super big queen queen winning hand. So first off, let's see the action. Everyone folds, get a walk with the nine deuce off. What a good start, right? So we're on ace nine suited next. Player limps in. Now, let me tell you, who's the number one target? I uh, don't know just yet if this is the number one target at the table, but definitely a target. He has a shorter stack, so he doesn't top off automatically to 100 big blinds each time. He limps into the pot from under the gun. Yes, absolutely fishy move. So what we want to do is start tagging the fish right away, even though you don't have hardly any stats on them. Even if you didn't even have a HUD on. If I just saw this player... 77 big blinds, uh, limping in, I know he's a fish right away. So we're looking for limpers, short stacks, bet sizes too. We're going to see some indications of real weakness and fishy play with some bet sizes as the hands go on. So fold and a fold. Now, during this time, I was playing race or fold only preflop, so I wasn't allowed to call. Not that I would ever limp in right here, but I could choose to raise or fold. Now, when you saw... In Poker Tracker 4, I was playing a lot of other tables at the same time. I don't know if I was involved in another hand. I'm totally fine with ISO raising or isolation raising versus the limper. Just the goal of getting heads up against him at this time. And I should have ISO raised, but I elected to fold for whatever reason. I don't remember why exactly. But still, we learned something about this player limping in. He's a fish. Oh, we've got a short stack here. Automatically, anybody at 30 big blinds? I just classify them as a fish right away until they start showing me that they're not said fish. 10, 9, 3 board. Half pot. Okay, that's a decent bet size. Average standard bet size. Seven big blinds here. Check. Ah, oh, then one big blind. This is the bet sizing indication. When somebody bets just one fifth pot, most likely they're weak right here. It could be just a flush draw, trying to really cheat bluff uh, and just hoping to, if he bets this, he can call on the river. He might check and he'll be able to check behind with a weak hand. It's just a really weak bluff. You're not getting hardly anything. No pairs are going to fold to this, not from a fishy player. No draws are going to fold to this either. And if he has a set of sevens here, he's missing out on value. That board is so wet. He's easily playing two, three, four, five big blinds for flush draws, pair plus draws, whatever else he might have. A top pair hand. If he had a made hand, it's time to be betting bigger. Ineffectual bet size equals a fish so watch for that and we got a call eight of clubs four to the straight three to the flush on the board ah half pot bet that tells me he hit his draw he's got either a jack uh for a um for a straight or a couple of clubs for that flush and we get a call right here okay jack 10 yep he rivered his straight and then six seven so he rivered a lower straight but remember it's important to note right that one big blind bet, he had six, seven at the time. So just a third pair with a gut shot draw as well. So that bet equals weakness. We got to remember that for future hands against this player. Next one, 10, seven suited. Fish make your plays very easy. So watch this. We get a limper. Ah, loving that. Demonstrating he's a fish. One of the great reasons to play on ignition poker is because you have so many fish at your tables. A fold here now i could choose uh to fold as well but i wanted to raise i wanted to iso raise i wanted this fish heads up all to myself not a great hand but i do have position and it's something that is potentially playable on the flop but check out what happens <gasps> a fish cold calls five big blinds <gasps> another fish calls again for four extra big blinds uh making it a four-way pot on the flop now oh and then um of course he completed right there so four ways to the uh, flop jack 10 7 second pair backdoor straight draw not much of a hand right here but like i said fish make your play easy holy cow this is a relatively for me a relatively unknown player i know he's a fish but i don't know that he's capable of betting greater than three times pot 
as a bluff. And if I call right here, really, that's all I'm trying to do, bluff catching. So his overshove made it super easy. If he bet just 10 big blinds, or if he checked and I decided to bet 10 big blinds and he raised me to 22 or 23, it's a much tougher decision. His overshove makes my fold incredibly easy at this point. Now, like I said, if I knew he was an aggressive player, knew he's capable of bluffing right here, I could potentially call. I wouldn't. That's a ton of chips. Three times the pot to risk with just second pair and no kicker. So I probably wouldn't call. But like I said, easy decision. Thank you, Mr. Fish. So do say it offsuit. Eh, nothing to report in this hand. I fold. Nothing to report for me in the hand. We got a limp and a limp. Great. Uh, demonstrating their fishiness. Another player, brand new to the table, first hand in the big blind, starting with 30 big blinds. What kind of a player is he? We get a one big blind donk bet. So he's been making some very small, very weak bets. And it worked in this instance, right? One third pot, getting everyone to fold. Next hand. Now I asked you what kind of player is this starting with 30 big blinds? You probably guessed it. Ziffish. Give him the green color code there. So 9-5 suited. Now, this is a great reason to go through and review table sessions or an entire tournament at a time. Because a lot of us multi-table, we're not necessarily paying attention to all of the action that happens. For example, right now, I folded. I might have just, my attention might have completely left this table, gone to another table, and I didn't see the action. But now that I'm watching this table and replaying it after the fact, I can learn from my opponent's plays and maybe catch mistakes that they're making. Either I can capitalize on them or I can realize, holy cow, he made a mistake. I should not be repeating that mistake in the future. And this is a good lesson learned from someone else's mistake kind of hand. So open to three big blinds. We get a call and the rest folds. Heads up, out of position as the C better. Queen, deuce, three. Scary board for anybody without a queen and without a heart right here. But he just checks. Interesting possibly showing some weakness. Maybe he flopped a flush. Maybe he has a set of queens right here. Slow playing this player. Who knows what he's doing? But he shows weakness by checking instead of c-betting. This player shows plenty of weakness as well. Oftentimes, especially like an ace of hearts or a really strong hand is going to c-bet here. A made flush is going to c-bet. Just two big blinds to start building that pot because he's going to want to get his entire stack in by the river. So weakness by a check, weakness for him checking behind. This is such a good spot to be delayed C-bet bluffing. Pocket sixes without a heart, um, ace king without a heart, uh, pocket jacks. All of those should be bluffing here just to get him to fold to win that pot right now. A great delayed C-bet opportunity. And also if he has, if he just now turned a straight with ace four, or if he has a set of fives now after checking the flop, he's got to be betting to get value. So a bet right here, a delayed C-bet can do two different things, potentially get better hands to fold or get value out of weaker hands if he had a made hand that he was slow playing on the flop. So that's why I'm saying it's good to watch these hands. I caught his mistake right now based on the board, based on that turn card, based on the opponent. That's going to help me not make his mistake in the future. And a check behind. Whoa, showing tons of weakness right there. Now, three streets of weakness after open raising preflop, we can put him on a hand that's going to check fold this river. Now, I don't know if he has a great hand. He bet more than half pot, roughly two thirds pot. He could be doing this as a straight up bluff, although we think of him as a fish, but so far on the river, he's bet one out of one. He might be capable of bluffing on rivers when opponents show out of position weakness on three streets, but we'll never know what either of them had here. 9-5 offsuit. Tiny donks are working. So we get a limp again and a limp, fold, a completion. So yes, we got fish over here and then just checking. Who knows what he has? Not a strong enough hand to iso raise, right? King 7-7, seven, seven, hard to hit board, but we've seen this villain 24. Donk bet one big blind into the three big blind pot and it worked. He won the pot. He's doing it again and it works again. Those one big blind donks are working maybe in, in a future hand. If I want to steal a pot, I have absolutely nothing. Maybe I should try a one big blind donk bet. A limp and then a raise. So with this ace five suited hand, this player is normally passive. We can see he's only raised one out of 10 times, but he's played six out of 10 hands. That means he's just calling when he enters the pot pre-flop. Well, five out of six times that he played. 
He's finally making a raise. He has a strong hand right here. If it's an ace, well, let's see the action before it gets to me. So my options at this point are to fold, call, or raise. I can't call because I'm playing raise or fold only in this instance. So I can raise him or I can just fold and exit the hand. But what is he raising with? I guarantee if he had ace four or pocket deuces, something that I have pretty good equity against, he's just limping behind, right? This I guarantee is a strong pocket pair or if it's an ace, it's ace king or ace queen, which crushes my ace five. Plus he has position on me. I just don't really want to play this spot right now. So I end up folding because his raise, I doubt he's going to fold. If I'm going to win this pot post flop, I'm going to have to bet into him. And that'll require me betting from out of position in a bloated pot. It'll be roughly 20 big blinds if I make a nine right here. I'd rather just not put myself into that situation. I'd rather have position and three bet bluff him from the button or the cutoff. So I fold. Oh, he calls. Interesting. Seven, eight, jack. Check. Now one big blind. That feels, that smells like weakness, right? One big blind call. The donk bet, min donk bet didn't work in this point at this point. So I bet he has pair or a decent draw. Now a check and then a bigger bet right now and a call. He's got to have some kind of a really good draw, maybe pair plus draw like eight, six or eight, nine, something like that. Um, or even just a jack that doesn't want to fold. But he bet bigger, so he must kind of now want to put the screws to him, or actually he decided that he has a good hand at this point. 6.8 big blinds a call. Now three hearts, the board paired with the sevens. We get a check and a check, and then we get to confirm, oh, a six, he called a bigger bet with the open ender. Like I said, probably has a good draw or a top pair to be making that call. And this player over here had pocket nine. So you can see on the flop, it wasn't necessarily a one big blind bluff. He had a pair still and he had a gut shot at the same time. So my guess is he makes sometimes he can make small bets just to try to build the pot in anticipation of turning or rivering something good. Like he can bet on the come this player. Queen Jack offsuit. This isn't worth playing, but raising is always better than limping. This is a mistake that villain 24 makes in this hand. So we have a limp. Like I said, raising should be better or raising is better than limping. Limp, limp, limp. Ah, a limp right here. He's looking kind of loose aggressive, but he's called 33%. Eh, it's only one out of three, but I'm going to classify this player as a fish just because of that limp right there. I mean, sure, he's getting really good odds to set mine or seven, six suited or jack eight suited, stuff like that. But I think it's a super weak play. I decided to fold, didn't want to call limp behind nor raise with just a queen jack offsuit and a check right here. But on the ace high board, one big blind donk bet. Oh, it's not working. This guy raises at this point. And then a call and then a call as well. Demonstrating great strength, maybe flopped a set of fours, a six, two pair, something like that, possibly. 9.6, half pot, just calling at this point, kind of a wet board, flush draws, straight draws possible, two different flush draws. Five of diamonds hits, completes some straight draws, completes the flopped flush draw as well. And then bets, oh, tiny little weak bet. That is not a flush bet. He does not have a flush guaranteed right here. That doesn't mean we can get him to fold. Maybe he has like a, a, I don't know, just a weak ace. Maybe he turned a nine, luckily called that bet uh, on the flop after donking. And then we get just a call right here, but I guarantee he has at least an ace or better. A seven, oh, top pair, weak kicker. And then over here, six, four, flopping two pairs. So that's why raising is better than limping. That's a crazy hand to be limping with, but he saw such good potential against another fish and a player who hasn't shown much aggression yet. That's my current table image. I'm tight at 17-17, but no three bets, no raising uh, first in. I ISO raised one player with the best position. He can assume I'm not going to come over the top in the small blind. But yeah, so that's how my table image is right now. And he just took advantage <clears throat> of a really good situation to limp behind. And this player over here, raising... Raising first in with a7 suited is a great play in the MP. If he would have raised first in, he might have just taken that pot down, but he would have denied this player such good limping equity, he wouldn't have lost that pot right there. So, 7 deuce off suit. Oh, one thing to note about that hand is this loss after limping with a top pair weak kicker and missing his flush draw as well. Keep that in mind. 
that can send somebody on tilt, potentially start to build that anger. Let's see this next hand. Seven deuce off suit, just fold, not going to play anything. A limp, check check I'm betting one big blind oh it doesn't work you got raised again he donk bet not donk bet one big blind and got raised again his anger might be coming to a head here and he just calls 11.7 over pot and he calls holy cow what can he have right here did he have a king to get trip kings ah six nine flopped the straight and he got his whole stack in at that point it was a short stack just starting with 16 big blinds and then 6-3 right here. He had a mm, weak flush draw, but he had a gut shot, wasn't able to hit, lost 15 big blinds, two big hands, losing in a row, playing how playing you know hands that maybe he shouldn't play that way, should have folded to that donk and that raise. Yeah, he could be tilting. And that leads us to the awesome pocket queen's hand. Three big blinds. Now, let me ask you, what would you make it right now, given that we're surrounded by fish and potentially one tilty player? What size would you three bet? Remember, I'm not going to call. What would you three bet? Well, me, I chose to make it 12 big blinds. I've got some crazy lovely fish potentially on the line right now, plus one tilty player making it 12. I was really hoping he would just shove over the top. Or he would shove as well, right? For only 19 more big blinds, he could easily shove right now. Get a fold. Oh, and a call. Holy cow, another call. And then another call. Wow. So just like before, I ISO raised to five big blinds, three callers. I make it 12 big blinds, three callers. Loving this. 48 big blind pot, 52 behind, 86, 198. Basically, with such a big pot, if anybody hits a pair or a draw, they are going to be committed because that pot is so big at this point. Well, I should say any top pair. Maybe a second pair or a thir third pair can fold. But I hit that over pair, backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw as well. I'm loving this spot right now. And then he just, he makes my decision so easy, right? Once again, he is shoving greater than pot. Holy cow, we got a raise and over the top raise. Loving this now. The fact that he raised, okay, he could have pocket nines. He might even have pocket threes. I could be beat right now. But basically, I've got a potentially tilty shover. I would never fold to that bet right here. Now, this guy, super fishiness on kind of a wet board, but I have plenty of equity versus any draws he might have. He might have ace jack right now. He might have 10 queen for an open ender. Uh, he can't have an open ender plus flush draw with 10 queen. Oh, 10-8 of hearts could be that as well. I think I'm ahead of both of these players. Got to make this call at this point. That pot is, well, pretty hefty pot. Hit my set on the turn. Loving that. And then darn, a third heart. I hope I'm not up against a flush draw. 7-9, second pair, weak kicker right here. Shoving, just making that over bet with a bluff. And then 10 jack, just a weak top pair hand. He turned an open ender. He had equity against my set, uh, against my set, but still loving that play or loving this hand. I love my play. I love my sizing. I love the fact that everybody raised. But you can see how now after reviewing this table session from start to finish, I got a really good sense of what everyone was doing. And I really did in game and in the moment afterwards right now reviewing, I totally capitalized on the players that were at my table. Oftentimes, if I didn't see these fish, if I didn't see this guy tilting, I would have just made nine big blinds right here against this under the gun player. But because I knew what was going on, paid attention, I made it bigger. Now, if after reviewing, not after, but during this review session, if I found myself right here just making it nine big blinds, I would classify that as a mistake. Not an egregious mistake, not like I'm losing money but I'm potentially missing out on money. You saw how all these players called versus 12. They would have called 11, 10, and nine. So I would have missed out if I saw a nine big blind bet right here. Now, who knows? I could have made it 13, 14, 15. Maybe I would have made just as much money. Actually, he probably would have folded, right? Against a bigger bet, um, but I might've got them to call. So I think 12 big blinds was the perfect bet. But like I said, if I had made it nine, I could have caught that as a value missed opportunity and I could learn from that one. All right. Thank you for watching the video. Once again, don't forget, go to uh, the link in the description for that free PDF, five poker tracker for study strategies every player needs to use.